Hey, Travis at Traverse Music. Today we're gonna to show you how to get the best performance out of your Gibson SG. Hey, Travis at Traverse Music. Today we're gonna to set up an SG. And when I say set up, I mean we're doing all the things that the pros do. We're not doing your fast, easy setup that you see so much on so many other channels. We're gonna go very meticulous. We are setting up every little detail of this guitar and we're gonna have some fun doing it. You got yourself an SG, and this will apply to both Epiphone and Gibson. What do we do? The first thing I always do whenever I have a guitar in the shop is I test the electronics out. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is plug this guitar in, test the knobs, make sure we don't have any crackling, stuff like that. Also test your switch, make sure that that's functioning properly. All right, so we're back, and uh, after testing electronics, we just have a, a little scratchy tone knob. So that's great, that means we get to show you how we clean out the pots as well for these. So I've played the guitar, I've been bending notes, I see how the fretboard feels. The guitar needs some serious work done to it. Let's start talking about some things that we know we need to get done. We have a significant bow right here in the fretboard. You might be able to feel that, otherwise we're gonna get you a straight edge so that you can check that out. The bridge on here is actually backwards. Our action is pretty darn high and it looks like our pickups are gonna have a lot of different variants and volume just based off what they look like coming off the strings. Okay, so for today's tools, we have a lot of things we're gonna need, um, and I'm gonna send some affiliate links below, so if there's something that you see that you like and you wanna grab, go ahead and get it. I will tell you what my absolute favorites are. First thing that I absolutely love is some sort of electric screwdriver. Now, I say electric screwdriver, not electric drill. I will put a link to one of these, otherwise this Tack Life one is also very affordable. These are fantastic when we want to use our string winders on them. We'll send a link for this guy too. Not very powerful. You're not gonna screw up your tuners when you're using this thing. Um, I see a lot of people put these on drills and I replace tuners because of it. So, fantastic tool to use, absolute must. Another thing we're gonna use today is Dunlop Fretboard 65 for the oil. Absolutely loves this, love this stuff. Um, I really like the color. It tends to bring out a lot of the darkness and the richness in a lot of fretboards. This is a tool you can choose to use. So if you're gonna use something like 4-0 steel wool or a white scotch bright pad, you need a fret guard. I do have them, I use them quite often. I like to tape mine like this. The reason why is it allows me to hold it and it also guarantees that even if my piece of material that I'm using is bigger than this tiny thin little thing, I don't have to worry about scratching up the fretboard. So for the fretboard cleaning and the fret cleaning, we're actually gonna use uh, Gorgamite. I'm gonna put a link below to this stuff. This stuff is fantastic. It is both a cleaner and a conditioner. Even after we clean this, we're going to condition it with oil but this works fantastic on both frets and fretboards. Takes a lot of the DNA and dirt out of there. Straight edge is very, very important. I'm gonna to link to this specific one. Stumac has a lot of great uh, straight edges too, but they're quite expensive. The reason why I like this one is it's not sharp. They took the time to actually make sure that you don't have anything that's gonna scratch the fretboard on this one, where the other cheaper ones, uh, they're just dangerous, especially when you're using like a glossed over maple finished fretboard. We have a Gibson SG today, so I am guessing a 5 16 nut truss rod adjustment. This is likely what it is. Most guitars are this, so this is what we have. If it's not this one, we have plenty more, but again, another great Stumac tool. A tool my shop wouldn't live without is the Stumac screwdriver set. This is one of the more expensive tools on the bench, and especially if you get the set that comes with the three wrenches here. Um, these wrenches work for almost every guitar, and we have a plethora of tips to put on this. Why spend the money on this? Because these tips aren't cheap tips. They're not tips that are stripping. I've had this screwdriver set for almost two years at this point. It's a fantastic tool set. I have a tip for everything I could possibly think of, and it just works great. Highly, highly, highly recommend. One last cleaning tool that I use on a lot of guitars is just a little paintbrush. This is great for just trying to get dust out of areas that you really can't get Q-tips in and stuff like that. I just use this to really clean out tight areas. If little hairs fall out, they're easy to grab. Um, but going like this alone, I've already had a bunch of dust just fall off this bridge and onto the pick guard already. So, uh, great tool to have just for dusting. And lastly, when we do our intonation, we want a nice tuner. Now I'm using the Peterson strobe tuner. This is a very high-end tuner, an expensive tuner. If you're not doing setups on a regular basis, you don't need something like that. You can get away with a normal clip-on tuner. 
One last tool we almost forgot about is a convenient pair of wire cutters. I like these because they're flush, and then when I'm cutting strings on the tuning pegs, we're not leaving extra residue. These are fantastic, I use these all the time. You can get them on Amazon as like eight packs for very, very cheap. They don't last very long, but again, they come in large packs and they are affordable, so replacing them isn't a big deal to me at least. All right, so we're gonna start right now. We know what needs to get fixed. Generally, the first thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna take the strings off the guitar, we're gonna pull the pieces that are gonna fall off, off, and then we're gonna just start cleaning stuff up. String winder is a great tool to have. I don't need to unwind this string all the way. I just unwind it enough to where I can pull this up and cut it and remove it. One thing to make sure of with these electric um, winders is that if you have tuning pegs that are really close, you don't wanna rest this on the headstock and then start spinning it. You will leave a circle on the side of your headstock. You don't wanna do that. Put on as far as you need to go, making sure you keep your distance. Pull the tailpiece off, just get rid of all these strings. If you are a local watcher and you live near us, feel free to bring your strings in and drop them in our recycling box. We ship those strings out to a place that specifically recycles guitar strings. So save them up, bring them in. We do all that stuff free for the public and uh, it doesn't cost you anything. I don't care if you bought your strings here or if you bought them from someone else, we'll take care of that for you. So if you are um, somebody that's done work on guitars in the past and you kind of know what you're doing, this video is going to go a little slow, but there's some things that I want you to keep your eye open for too if you've done this before. Um, the first thing is when you're pulling your strings out of the nut, are they stuck in the nut? On this guitar specifically, they are. And the customer actually plays heavier strings on this guitar, but never had it set up for those heavier strings. So we're putting 11s back on and I can actually feel some of these strings stuck inside the nut, which means one of two things. The nut's not lubricated properly or it's not cut properly. So it's probably cut for nines or tens. Um, and then just the bigger strings are getting stuck in there. So as I mentioned before, I'm gonna use the Gorgamite on this. I really like this stuff. Uh, I tend to use it a lot on finish necks, and the reason why is because I hate putting the fret collars or the fret guards on these, and on the maple necks with the finish work, because it does scratch it sometimes if you're not incredibly careful. This stuff just, you don't have to worry about that. Um, another nice thing is I, I love how this smells, and it just does a really great job cleaning without having to, especially if you're using steel wool, get little wool fragments all over the place. A lot of guitars touch this bench and I don't want somebody else's steel wool scratching up somebody else's nice finish, something like that. Rip off a fairly small piece. Now this will get your hands black, so if you care about that, put gloves on and we'll just start cleaning up some frets here. So as we see right here, we have a pretty tarnished fret. There's a little bit of rust, but the biggest thing is the tarnish and we have the oil and tarnishing on that stuff. What happens is it tends to eat away at the metal on a lot quicker rate, and keeping that clean not only helps it not deteriorate faster, but it's also gonna give us a cleaner bends and things like that. So let's clean this up. We're gonna clean the one right in the middle of these two up. So you just saw how fast that happened in real time. Grab a microfiber cloth. I'm just gonna wipe this off, and you see how much of a difference that makes already. Really easy product to use. Does a good job. So, and you can use this on both the frets and the fretboard, so don't be shy, let's just clean this thing up, so. The next thing I do is I put my lemon oil on and I do it right now for a couple reasons. It gives me time to do cleaning on other parts of the guitar and then it also gives me, uh, gives a guitar time for it to like soak in, really get in the fretboard. This isn't a dry fretboard, 
but it certainly could use a little bit of oil. So uh, a lot of people might have this stuff or a similar product and it doesn't have the applicator on top. Using a microfiber cloth is just fine. Um, you wanna make sure that you get a decent amount on there. I like to use my finger even when I'm done to kind of make sure it's along the entire part of the fretboard, even right up against those frets. And a nice even coat. This is already starting to suck it in. Why is fretboard oil great? Well, for starters, it helps keep the wood hydrated, which reduces fret sprout. The other thing is, is if it's saturated with oils that are good for the wood, the oils that come off your fingers and the sweat and stuff that comes off your body, which is very acidic, won't be getting in the wood if we have the right amount of oil there. If you're watching this video and you're setting up a guitar that's not an SG, I totally get it. If you do have a finished fretboard, don't put oil on it. I feel like that's common sense, but there are people out there that I've seen oil their fretboards. It's already finished. The oil's not getting in there. You're not cleaning it really. Just use the Dunlop polishing cleaner on there. That works just fine. Otherwise, the Stumac cleaner that you'll see me using a lot of too. So while this soaks a little bit longer, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna tighten up you'll see right there that one already i could tell it was loose these you don't want to over tighten you can crack the headstock but we're just getting a little a little turn there just to tighten it up a little bit but you see how loose those are not a lot of pressure just enough to keep it snug while i'm up here i'm also going to take the time to remove that truss rod cover All right, so about the time that it took to just tighten this, I haven't even cleaned it yet. I can see that this is pretty much soaked in uh, a good amount. What we're gonna do is we're gonna wipe off all the excess oil. Now, I'm not being super thorough about the excess oil at this point. I'm okay if it's still a little bit on there. I'm gonna do another wipe down before I actually string the thing. But now I have no fear of picking this guitar up and moving it around and having oil drip around. So now we're gonna go through and Make sure we have the tailpiece and the bridge off. We're gonna go through, we're gonna clean different parts of the guitar. For this process, I'm gonna use the Color Tone Professional Finish Clean and Shine from Stumac. Um, silicone free, it's a nice cleaner, especially if you have high gloss stuff. Um, this isn't gonna make this glossy, but the high gloss stuff, this actually helps protect it a little longer. Fantastic cleaner. We're gonna spray the rag, not the guitar. Little pro tip. Microfiber is fantastic. It does a great job not scratching if you have the right kind. But this tag right here will scratch it. And if you cut it, you're actually gonna create even more of a scratching edge to it. What we wanna do is treat this rag like a tool. We're gonna fold this in a way that that cannot come out and hurt us while we're wiping our guitar down. All right, so we're just putting this back after cleaning this up. Um, I'm not super particular about having these in or out because we are doing a setup, so I didn't care about the height. If this was a guitar that was already set up and you were just restringing it and you wanted to take this off to clean it, I would say don't move these, don't take them off, try to clean around them, simply because then you have to do a setup again. So we mentioned we had a pot that was a little dirty. All we're gonna do is take off this back cover here using our Stumac screwdriver. Again, a fantastic tool. So we're using the detox on this. We know it's this tone knob. All we're going to do is just kind of get this in here and it's gonna be a quick spray. That's all it is. And then we're gonna lift the guitar up a little bit we're gonna turn that knob back and forth. And that already feels way, way, way better. And that's all you gotta do to clean that up. <laughs> 